The Pittsburgh Penguins are currently in a playoff spot once again. We thought the season was maybe over when the Penguins lost to the Maple Leafs in overtime. But the Penguins had a chance to redeem themselves in a very important game against Detroit. They faced Patrick Kane and their playoff hopes. Pittsburgh Penguins had a 5-3 lead and blew it to bring it to an overtime. Thank God for Sidney Crosby and Eric Carlson. And the Pittsburgh Penguins defeat the Detroit Red Wings in overtime, 6-5. to five. To get into the playoffs. Hold on. Good. Okay. You want me to take it? Okay. We're back. Hold on. That was better. We're back. <laughs> there it is. A <laughs> lot of set. A lot of things going. It's all right. We're here. We're living life just like the Pittsburgh Penguins now that they have life into the playoffs. They are current. I Josh, I don't even know the standings. I don't know the points. I, I got it. I got it all for you. If my Wi-Fi is struggling right now, I got four tabs going right now. So And that's all that Josh's Wi-Fi can take. So <laughs> we'll get into it. Take a barely into one tab. We can that's that is true. Well, this episode is a good one. We got a couple things going for you. We're going to talk about the game. We're going to talk about the playoff race. And we're also going to have Coach Donnie Harkins to break down an awesome goal by Sidney Crosby today. But before we do that, thanks for joining the stream. Whether you're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, or YouTube, we thank Hey, thank you. Get into the chat. We already see some people getting into the chat. Make sure you get in there, comment, tell us what you think about tonight's game. Or if you're listening on a later date on Spotify, Apple, Google, wherever you find your favorite podcast, we appreciate it. With that being said, let's talk about tonight's game. Josh, we look good for the first period. We look good for the first period. Yeah. Your initial thoughts of tonight's game. I I, I said it when I got on uh, with you. I, I'm still shaking. Man, that game, like, it shaking. felt nice to have, shaking. you know, the, the juices going for a game. Because last game, I understand, you know, everyone was, like, was hyped for that game. It was the start of the hype train. I get it. But, like, I didn't, yeah. I didn't feel it yet. And then we had a couple days off where it just, like, marinated. And got to feel where we where things were at and what was on the line for us. And it just it got me extra juiced coming into it. And nice. then the game that actually just took place just made it all the better. You know, uh, the crowd was really into it. It, it yes, legitimately felt like playoff hockey. It was physical. You know, Sid was getting after it. And then the goals just started piling on, and it was nice. It was sweet. Yeah. Now, granted, there's a lot of defensive lapses, a lot of turnovers. Chris Letang. Yep. And then in the third period. Eric Carlson. Both guys making up for it with goals. So, I could, you know, you could be upset. No, no, but like, no, no. Also, no, at no, the no, same no. time, thanks, you know? No. I know. Anyway. I know. You know, who we, you know what? There was some blasphemy. Last episode, not coming from me or Josh, not pointing names, Mr. Honey Ho- Hunter Hodes, saying, I wouldn't put big Jeff Carter out on there. I wouldn't want him out there. Put Sid out there. Put Gino out there. I'm sorry. Sid has a goal. Did Gino get a goal tonight? No. Big Jeff Carter got a short handed, a shorty <clears throat> by blocking a shot at the blue line. Unreal. He stepped up. Continue, Josh. Yeah. No, I mean, there's so many aspects of tonight's game that you can talk about that were just, just, it it felt good. It was definitely a roller coaster in terms of the, the scoring, but also in everything else. You know, the just the play in general, 
there we had really high highs of great play and then we had some really lows of just turnover after turnover you know stuck in the defensive zone you know relying on Ned I, I'm starting to see a little fatigue from Ned I don't want I don't want to say it out loud but seeing a little doing? fatigue from Ned um but honestly it was it was really nice to That's just good. pull this one out you know That's and good. just get the win uh, you know, you mentioned we had our, our guest uh, last episode, Hunter Hodes. He, last episode, he was talking about the overtime and how he didn't like certain players being out there to start. Well, yeah. tonight, he uh, Coach Sullivan, as Louie has mentioned numerous times, listens to this podcast. He heard yeah, Hunter. Yeah. He yeah, put yeah. on Sidner Crosby first, up, first line in the overtime. So yeah. actually, yeah, put him a few times out there. And well, yeah, yeah. And honestly, overtime looked so much better than it has, I think, all season. I, you know, I don't, I don't know yeah. what you thought, Louis, but just the way that they were a little bit more patient and a little bit. Obviously, they were being picky in terms of their shots. But I mean, you have to on three on three. But at the mm-hmm. same time, I thought it was smart pickiness, if, if you if you will. Yeah, so. I need to say something before I get into my take on overtime. Okay. They fair. were playing super scared. I feel like in the second and third. In the so they second, had a late second, early third. Yes, I agree. They were playing scared. They, not only were they taking their foot off the gas, but they were not willing to do that extra push because they were afraid if they did it, they would make a mistake and it goes the opposite way, which did happen because mm-hmm. they were afraid to make it. They therefore made the mistakes. And I felt like they were doing that a lot. And I kind of tweeted that out. Hey, is it me or the Penguins playing a little scared right now? They shouldn't be. They should be on on the offensive because they have them on the ropes. But it's the Penguins of this season. You know, they they have them and then they don't. And I felt like they started off over time very similar. Like, oh, don't want to don't want to do that. Don't want to don't want to yeah. push a little too much. But then all of a sudden, as Crosby came out there for the second shift, you saw, mm-hmm. hey, let's get into that offensive zone. Let's set up a play. Hey, let's Raquel brought it to the net, which I thought was very good, which then ed- led up to the Eric Carlson goal. I will say, if we play like we did in the first period throughout for the rest of these games, we got ourselves a playoff contender. We got it. We got ourselves a playoff contender. So that yeah. I mean, a little scared, but yeah. And just the last thing I'll say about the game is just that uh, we need to end periods correctly. Correct. End of yes. the first period, let no in a foot goal. off the gas. End of the second oh. period, let in a goal. We can't do that. We got to fi- like I, I sound like a coach. Got to finish strong the yeah. same way that how you start strong. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's it's the biggest thing only because you could physically see the penguins slow down. So if 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 we see that, imagine what the Red Wings saw, where the yeah. penguins were slow in their own zone. They weren't really trying to break out or do anything. They just like to stay, like to like to kind of play it safe with the last three minutes left to go in each period. And it bit them in the butt because every single time they did that, like you said, they scored on us with under three minutes each period when we were leading. So mm. it's a very frustrating trait that the Penguins have because you want them to end strong because we have a lead. Let's protect it. This is a very important game. Let's let's try not to just give up here. And I know that's not what they were doing. Mm-hmm. They they were they were trying to play it safe. I get that. I am I'm not uh, oblivious to that fact. But they need to to button it up. You know, I think one play that really shows that they can do this, but they don't, is when they had a delayed penalty in the third period. It was later in the period, no earlier in the period, excuse me, and they killed time. They oh, went back and wow, they just being while having the delay well, penalty yeah correct yeah and they killed about a, a strong minute and they were passing to each other they were pulling back 
That's what I want to see with those three minutes left. But they didn't, and it bit us in the butt. So hopefully they take that going forward with the last three games of the season. Three games, 80, 80, 81, 82. Three games left to go in this season. Hopefully they could take that and go, this is what we need to do from here on out. But Josh. With that segue. Was, that was beautiful. Thanks. Someone in this hockey game played outstanding, as he always does. Because he's the greatest hockey player of all time, Josh. All right? And he has led us to a very certain spot. Really quickly, I just want to, I'm going to say it, and then we're going to talk about playoffs. I'm throwing a curveball at you, Josh. It's okay. Fire away. Sidney Crosby enters in 10th place all-time scoring with his goal tonight. And then his overtime assist to Oh, no, he had two assists tonight. But uh, his first assist got him to 999 in, in, in assists all career. And then tonight, overtime assist to Eric Carlson, secured 1,000 assists for Sidney Crosby. Unreal. Not done. Okay, not done. He also just got voted the most valuable uh, – no, sorry, not voted – he got most valuable player. Um, whoa. Wayne, I see your comment. Yep. We'll get there, dude. Um, hey, ADD is a serious problem, Josh. Um, we also, he got voted like five things by the players. Most like players, player, uh, fans, play, all, all these awards by the Penguins. He got them all. And then he got voted by the NHL players of the most complete player for the fifth straight year. Yeah. I uh, had a conversation with our father today uh, where I had to father. argue that Sidney Crosby is the greatest hockey player of all time. He was going, no, no, Lemieux was. And I said, I want you to pull up highlights of Mary Lemieux and Sidney Crosby. And you just put those two players next to each other. Sid looks like a freaking super hu super human compared to Mario Lemieux. I am not saying Mario Lemieux is not good. Mario Lemieux is phenomenal in his era. Two different eras. Sidney Crosby is phenomenal. And he has led this Pittsburgh Penguins team to a playoff spot. They are currently in the second wild card spot. Josh, correct me if I'm wrong. But likely aren't Pittsburgh Penguins. The whole world is in their hands right now. Can you break down the points, the percentages, the spots, all your four tabs open? Can Got you it. tell this world where the Penguins stand right now, Thursday, April 11th at 1024 p.m.? Yeah, so I had to close one of the tabs because the New York Down Islanders there. did win in overtime. So oh. uh, we were keeping an eye on that. When we went live, it was tied 2-2 uh, late in the third, and then um, they won in overtime. So they are at 89 points, sitting third in the Metropolitan Division. As Louis just said, we are in the second wild card spot at 86 so we are one point ahead of the Washington Capitals, who lost tonight, mm -hmm. the Detroit Red Wings, who obviously lost tonight while picking up a point, and the Philadelphia Flyers, who won tonight. Okay, So those three teams are on our heels. Uh, the Capitals and the Red Wings still have three games to play, just like us, whereas the Flyers, they have two games. So that is the one benefit we have over the Flyers. It does appear that uh, with tonight's win, we do have the tie break over the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, nice. So that is that is the huge thing going forward. I think we also have the tie break over the Capitals, um, but I will I'll, I'll have to look into that further. Um, but everything's looking really good for us right now. Now, when you talk about percentages, um, it seems like a lot of it is going to be 
up to us. You, you know, you talked about it. Our playoff hopes, our playoff chances are in our hands. So that is right. going over to Money Puck, I hit refresh while you're talking about Sidney Crosby, and they are nice. up to date as of 1020 p.m. The Show New York me. Islanders, with their win, are at a 91.5% uh, chance okay. of making the playoffs. Okay. So, so obviously, we can't eliminate them. Okay, But with tonight's loss, I'm going to work backwards, the Detroit Red Wings are now at a 15% chance. With tonight's win, the Philadelphia Flyers are at a 16% chance. And after their loss, the Capitals are at an 18% chance. Oh, yeah. What's so the Penguins, puts, baby? So that puts us, after an overtime win 40%. and losses by Washington... We are at a 57.8% chance of making the playoffs. Can I just preface one thing about these stats? Two weeks ago, it was at 7% of making the playoffs. It was down to three. Wasn't it down to three? I think when we lost that game, yeah. It was down From to three. From a 3%. To a 57% making the playoffs. We currently sit pretty in the wild card two spot. If we win, okay, let's just play hypotheticals. If the Penguins win next game and the Capitals and Detroit lose, do we clinch that wild card two spot? No. No, so if we win, we only go up to a like a seventy five percent chance of making the playoffs. But if, like obviously, if the Capitals lose, they go down to just under ten, and Detroit goes to under five. So I think we need two more wins. They need two more losses for a clinch, and then yeah. our last game of the season is. Thank goodness we don't have to compete for a playoff spot. For That's the thing. I know a lot of people are like, oh, the Islanders game is going to be do or die for the, a playoff spot. I don't right. believe so. I think, you know, if something happens with the Islanders, it may be for that third Metropolitan Division spot. But at the same time, it may actually be to our benefit if they clinch ahead of us and then they just – they take the gas, the foot off the gas pedal, and maybe that allows us to get a nice two points there. And then, as we discussed with Hunter last episode, maybe we pick up, you know, two overtime points with these Bruins and Predators coming up uh, these next two games. What um, Saturday and then Monday. So. It's, it's, a, good. it's a journey. It's <laughs> it's been a journey. Can I just say? Can I just say? Just say after it. after the last step is after the last game. Oh no, game before when it like started like really heating up against Toronto. No, no, not yeah, Toronto. Yeah. Who was the one we won before Toronto? It was uh, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. Yeah, we weren't supposed to win that. It was against Tampa Bay. I watched the Pat McAfee show and PK Subban came Shout out. out. And he was like, I'm I'm now betting on the Penguins to make the playoffs. And I was like, just curious. What are the odds? Plus 550. I was like, yeah, throw a sweet 20 bucks on there. It's looking great right now. I could, did you throw I could, 20 bucks on it? I did throw 20 bucks on it. Josh, if that hits, okay? I, I'll win 120 bucks. All that money's coming to the podcast. I think that's what I think we should do. We'll see. What do you say? We'll split it three ways with Coach Donnie. What do you think? <laughs> All right, guys. Now's the time. We got Coach Donnie. We got Coach Donnie ready to come in, break down a beautiful goal by Sidney Crosby, assisted by Brian Rust. I asked you. While we were breaking down points, if you had any questions for Coach Donnie, he'll answer them as soon as he's done with the breakdown. All right? So with that, 
Let's welcome back to the podcast, Coach Donnie Parkins. Look at that. No how more good is, how good is how good is that one point earned in that overtime win against the Montreal Canadiens in the twelfth round of the shootout? Yeah. Oh, so, someone would deep. say I like it. Some would say that Harkins goal would, you know, you know, kind of lead us to a playoffs. You never know. <laughs> Maybe when he gets back in the lineup, he can get a big goal and help the team. But he, you know, does other things. Their line does a lot of things to help the team win, right? So, well, well hopefully, hopefully, Harkins comes Harkins back comes in the lineup, in the lineup very, very soon. soon. All right, let's pull That's up this goal this here. Goal. All right, Josh, All right. feel free to fill in this time with oh, Coach Don. My, my bad. My bad. Um, yeah, so, I mean, you were talking about the the extra point that we got with Montreal. It's all these extra points, you know, like the, the game against Toronto got a got a point there. Um, it's tonight. You know, even if we lost, let's just say hypothetical, we're in overtime. We're still able to make it work, you know, because, to, to, like, the percentages, this money puck that we, you know, have been referencing for the last few weeks – they had us, even if we lost in overtime, it still would have been a 50% chance for us to, to make the playoffs because every point right now is crucial. So, uh, you Absolutely. all right, Lewis? I'm pulling it up. I want off the goal. Right. Give me a hot second. Okay. Do you Now, question. I don't know if you know. Do you know where that echo is coming from? The echo's coming from Coach Don. Oh, gotcha. My bad. I thought it was me. Because I'm on the I'm on my iPhone on my computer. Remember? Oh, that's it's right. all good. I'm nervous. My phone because it says connected to Donald's Mac Studio. You can disconnect to remove this iPhone from the Mac microphone list. But if I do that, I don't know if I can get on. For more reason, my I don't have headphones. No, Wayne, I don't have headphones. Oh, same. oh yeah, that's right. You can see the chat. Yeah, I I always forget our guests could see the chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh, there's a there's a couple questions for you, and he's like, yeah, I already. I Actually, already. I had AirPods. My daughter came down for Christmas and, and confiscated them. Said, Dad, I forgot mine. Took them home. And then she came down for spring break last week. I go, Ellie, make sure you bring my my AirPods back. And she forgot to do it again. So. Kids, man. Come on. Come on. The worst. Especially there daughters, was. I heard. Her daughters are the sure. worst. Thank God I have all boys. She forget her arms if weren't attached. <laughs> I'm glad. I hope she's watching. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> all right, hold on. We're there. Guys, give me a second. I thought you had it. Just hey, saying. Josh, I don't like you questioning me at all. So... <laughs> I know the goal, though. I mean, you gained so much ice, and I think it was uh, St. Ivan, he made that pass up to uh, Smitty in the neutral zone, all the way from deep in the pen zone, and then Smitty just kind of left it there for Rusty. Hold on. Kep Kepka. Kepka's my master's pick, Brian. Kepka. Is that good? Oh. Can you see it? I can see it great, yep. All right. Here we go. This is the breakout. Yeah. So Riley just leaves it to Rusty. Rusty, look at how much how far Detroit's backed off the blue line. They just basically waved the white flag and said, we're going to give you all that real estate inside the line. We're not going to challenge you. And watch what Rusty does. Patience. He pulls up. Stop it right there. So right now, it's four on three Detroit. Okay. But now stop it, right? Keep going. Stop right there. Sidney Crosby's will to beat his man, David Perron, to that back post to the net is unlike, like you, you were talking earlier, how great of a, not only is he a great leader, a great person, but a great hockey player. But this is all will right here. And then he comes on the other side of Cider with a stick down. Kids, take notice of this. Here comes the puck. And bingo. Goal. It's all about Will right there, guys. Like, like David Perron is a very good, responsible defensive guy. But what a play by Rusty. All created because Detroit just backed off the blue line and gave up all that real estate, which to me is crazy. You want guys to step up. It's two-on-two two right here. 
And then he doesn't really go attack him now when he knows he's got guys, but David Perron's getting beat to the net. So I'm not sure what that defenseman's doing, challenging, but thank God he played it the way he played it. Because Number he 53. just I think it's Sherrod. I think it's Sherrod. He just he just put himself in no man's land. Like, look at right there, wave and stay like, what are you doing? Yeah. Now he clearly doesn't see Crosby enter the zone. He's turning left that entire yep. time. Yep. Crosby is. It would have been is, better off right there if they, they would have been better off if Cider would have left his guy and taken Crosby because I don't think if that's Drew O'Connor right there. Look at Drew's kind of facing the passer, so for him to re- retrieve the puck and then turn around and get a shot off, um, it's almost better that Cider would have went with Crosby actually, like right here. If he would have turned and went with Sid, well, then Rusty could have gave it to O'Connor. But if Connor retrieves that puck on his forehand, he's not really facing that. He's gonna have to, or Smitty, he's gonna have to pull it to his backhand. Then, like, look where he's at now. Like, is he in a great shooting angle? If he if he got the puck right there and Cider went with Crosby, is he really in a great shooting angle right there, Riley Smith? Probably not. Yeah. But it's all about decisions. I always tell kids all the time when I coach them at the youth level, is skate at defensemen, go east and west, force them to make a decision because defensemen when they make decisions and we live with it every day with our defensemen make poor decisions or uncanny decisions or the wrong decision that's just what happens when you have to make decisions and it's either a good decision or a bad decision but it gives yourself a chance just like in overtime the most important play in overtime is the faceoff because it's a 50 50 puck it's the best odds on the board any faceoff is a 50 50 puck and it's the best odds till a better play happens right till a better scoring chance or something happens so in overtime the most important play is the faceoff. Yeah. Now I have Louis. a quick question on yo, Josh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, are you able to keep going to see if they have a, like a camera shot of Sid screeching down the middle of the ice? I will that fast was, forward, Josh. Cause like what, what coach was saying is that him willing. Right. Yeah, right there's the pass. Beat, beat Who, who's the that defender. the pass? Who, who's that the Sid. Sid. pass? Sid. Yeah. It started with Sid. No, that, but right there is a right shot. Is that Raquel? Oh, that's Carlson. Oh, Carlson. Carlson made the pass. Ah. There's Sid right there. Sid is right there in the picture, standing right where the pass, the original pass is being made. So he turns, and, you know, the pucks move faster than skaters do, so the puck's all the way up the ice. Smitty corrals it, kind of knocks it down. Russ picks it up. But Sid, because Russ does that right there, gives Sid a chance because he's going full bore to that back post of the net to, to give him an option. I mean, just a great hustle play all the way around, guys. It's like we talk kids all the time. We coach them up. It's it's not what you do with the puck. It's what you do without the puck. And yeah. Sidney Crosby yeah. just did a tremendous a tremendous job without the puck to put himself in a position to be an outlet to make a, a you know, score a great goal. Oh, great, oh great that's a great there. shot there, Lewis. Yeah. So stop right yeah. there. Stop right there. If that puck would have went to Riley Smith right there, he catches it on his forehand. He would either have to quick and then send it across to Sid, right? But if Riley, if, if Cider went with Crosby, at least put a stick in the lane or something, because with him really kind of like closing in on Riley Smith, it created that extra lane right there. And that's how, yeah. you know, especially gets that pass through. It's just a great pass by Ross. A great play by making, you know, gaining the zone, creating patience. I mean, look where he threads the needle with this puck. Goes past that defender, Shabbat. Right between Smith and Cider, right on Sid's tape on the back door for uh, and that's a tough goal to score, guys. Because even though you're going that hard, you got to get good wood on it. You can't just hit your stick and you know fl- flub into the corner or whatever. I mean, just a great, great, great play, great goal. Also, isn't it? Isn't it? You also have to find the puck because you're now searching through three guys to try and find a puck that's you know. It's moving. Like, that's not a, you know, a, a light pass by Russ there. But, but Sidney Crosby has such great hand-eye coordination. That's, yeah, you know. of course. Yeah, that's true. Now, I, I, I just wanted to point out, so right where the puck is by Riley Smith's feet, I don't think Riley Smith or Shabbat knows that Crosby is screaming down the ice. Because at first I was thinking if Riley Smith got it on his forehand, he would just backhand it wide open to Crosby, it would kind of have the same result. But I don't think he knows it's there. So this is well, just kind cider, of... That cider, that cider who's stepping out. Go back and stop it again. Rewind it again. Stop. Oh. Keep going. Oh, sorry. Keep going again. Like, rewind it. Stop it right there. Ah! ah. You know where I'm trying to go. Yeah, well, keep running it. Right. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Right there. Right there. Stop it. 
Yeah, yeah. So look at David Perron's effort, who's a very responsible defensive guy. It's kind of a half-hearted effort <laughs> from from I mean a great defensive forward who's won a Stanley Cup and David Perron. Like that's he's just waving a stick at him. You're playing for desperation in your playoff lives here. And that's the better effort you give on a back check. Like I'm not trying to rip on the guy because he's a great player, but I'm just saying as a coach, you need more effort. Like it's effort and grinding. And I think that's what the Pens are doing right now. Finding ways to grind out a point or come back when they give up, you know, make bad plays and give up easy goals for the opposition. They find a way to battle back. And, you know, that just comes from that great leadership that Sid provides too, not just the, the production he puts up, but just, you know, his demeanor on the bench and the dressing room and how he leads that team. Like I, been around hockey a long time, got to meet Sid uh, one of my trips to see Jansen play. And I mean, just what a leader he is. What a leader on and off the ice. Just tremendous, tremendous. Dude, yeah. He's amazing. Now, he's, quick he's question. Willing them to win. He's willing them to win right now, guys. And you can't teach oh. that. Like that's, a, that's an inner character trait. And it's just, it's just amazing to watch in, in sports and, and in the real world too. Same thing. Have you ever seen a captain or just a player in general lead a team like this to a playoff spot ever in your like experience? I think Jonathan Taze did a pretty good job, you know, in Chicago when they were winning three cups. Um, you know, but every every great leader needs a good wingman, you know, right? So Sid's got, you know, some guys on his thing just like Kane was for for Taser back in the day when Chicago was winning cups. But uh um, not really. I mean, he's, he's probably the best, but Taser's probably the closest, you know, cause you think about it, I mean, David still hasn't won yet. Um, you know, the, so, I mean, Sid's done it numerous times with different groups too, with different mm -hmm. groups where Chicago had pretty much the, the core same group for all those years. And everyone keeps ripping on, you know, some of these fans in Pittsburgh are really tough. They rip on the cores getting old and Jeff Carter, this and Jeff Carter, that well, Jeff Carter blocked a shot. He got his own, got his own block shot, corralled it, struck, you know, streaking down the right wing and made a great shot on line, like right above, below his blocker and above his pad to uh, to score a huge goal to put him up five three tonight. So, yeah, yeah, good I stuff, wonder, guys, I right now. Good stuff. I guarantee you, nobody, including the Rangers, do not want. If Pittsburgh does make it in the playoffs, they do not want to play the Pittsburgh Penguins in the playoffs in the first round. I guarantee. You. If I'm, if I, if that's a series, I'm picking Pittsburgh against the Rangers. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about that uh, a couple episodes ago. We would want the Penguins to take on t the Rangers. We have played them. We have beat them. I think that's our best bet, and we could see ourselves going to the second round of the playoffs just because we're playing great hockey right now. Yeah, Better late than never, but we're playing great hockey right now. Like, like uh, Wayne said, he commented on my thing. He said, especially since doing this at this age is unprecedented. And it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I, I talked to Kane last, Kane last week at dinner when we were up in Tampa. Uh, when the Wings were playing the Lightning. And he said, I said, dude, how'd you lose that playoff series last year in New York? He goes, I don't know. We were, we were up 2 nothing on the Devils. And then we just got smoked four straight games. He said a lot, a lot of adjustments. I mean, you're up 2 nothing on someone. you got to step on their throat and put them on. you gotta, you got You can't let, let them up off the mat. Okay, I don't care if they're tapping out. You got to step on them and kill them. And they didn't do that. So the Rangers' core, the same core that gave up a two nothing series lead last year, is the core group that we're gonna, if we are able to get in the playoffs and finish in that second play in the spot, we're gonna. That's what we're gonna play. Do you have concerns about the Penguins with that same type of mentality? Because tonight they gave up two like goal leads twice. Yeah, they just have lapses. Like they just go to sleep yeah. for a minute, you know what I mean? Which, as a coach, it's very frustrating because you want to keep – momentum's a funny thing in sports, guys, as a coach. When you have it on your side, you want to keep keep it rolling, keep it rolling, keep it rolling, keep it rolling because one thing can change the momentum in a game. And then, boom, 5-4. Then Lucas Raymond, I mean, he's almost in all alone from the blue line in. Like, how does that even happen in a 5-4 yeah. game you with four minutes yeah. up in the game? So um, – you know, Brian says here, to, you know, Coach, how hard is it to balance the riding of a hot hand with net and not playing too much until the wheels fall off, especially with how sensitive the pen situation is right now? Um, Hold on, let me throw this this chat up because you can't save your seventh your your pitcher to pitch the seventh game if you never get to the seventh game. So, you know, it seemed like earlier or, or, or when that stretch was going net back and forth, it seems like when Sully would put in Jari, 
he didn't perform to the level that the Pens needed him to. And then he'd go back to Ned, and Ned wasn't doing it. Now, Ned's on a roll right now like Jars was in, in the middle part of the season. So, I don't know. I just think you keep you keep riding the wave until they say differently. Like, uh, you know, to try and get them. You know, they say that with Hullabuck in, uh, in Winnipeg. You know, he got tired, and that's why the playoffs the Jets don't go very far. I mean, I don't know. Put him in hyperbolic chambers, whatever you got to do, ice baths. Um, whatever you got to do to keep him fresh. Um, but I think for the goaltending, too, physically, these guys are in pretty good shape or not eat the right food, but just mentally. It's more of a mental thing, right? Like if he could be fresh mentally. Um, you know, I'm sure there's goals he's like to have back because Ned's as honest a guy you get um, when it comes to well, him making or not making a safe he felt he should make. So Well, you've coached him. Yep. What, what, do you, what have you seen – when Man. he was younger, you got to you got to get it closer. People got to see it a little closer. Yeah, this is what David Perron is going to see for the rest of his life. That's what David Perron saw right there—the back of his jersey. Yeah, he should be into the post. Well, I'm talking about those eyes. I think they're going to be burned in David Perron's eyes for the rest of his life. Uh, you coach Ned. When he was younger, obviously you see him having the success now. You say it's all about getting mental, mentally right. What have you seen work for him then that could work for him now? Well, he was always hard, so hard on himself. Like I felt bad when I pulled him because, you know, you pull goalies because either your team's not playing well in farm or, or they're not playing well. You know what I mean? Just like you'll sit players and take away their ice time. Like the quickest way and easiest way to get – players' attention is take away their ice time, right? Because everyone wants to play. So it's no different with a goalie. I, I've done it before where I've changed the goalies on the fly during a game when uh, when they weren't performing well. Like, I didn't stop play. Uh, and I've also pulled goalies and played with six guys and no goalie because the team in front of them didn't show up. Wait, you said you, you do it on the fly? Like, you just – Oh, yeah, like you change and... lines. Like you change lines. Yeah, just like you change lines. <laughs> I called that to the bench and put the next goalie out. And I've also pulled goalies and played with six guys and told my team – because they were flat and playing terrible, no desperation, no resilience, no nothing, and said, I don't care if the other team scores five open net goals. I'm not putting our goalie back in until you guys score one. We were down 4 nothing in Florida, I remember one time, U18 year, and I did that with my goalie because my guys were at the beach all day. We smoked the team in the first game in the morning at the Florida Everblades. We go to the beach all day. So in the first period, the first eight minutes of the game, my team's heads are still at the beach playing volleyball with those girls, okay? So I had to call timeout, and I pulled the goalie then, and I ripped my team. We went out and scored first. I put Nick back in that, Nick Deskins at the time. And then we ended up going on to win the game 6-5. to five. So, you know, when you can ramp up the desperation level as a coach, you're just looking for every right button to push. It's a hunch thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we press the right buttons. Sometimes we don't, you know, but we go with our gut feel. Like, we, I'm not a big analytics guy. In these situations, I go with my gut. You know, does the analytics probably say, yeah, you should rest or Jari's better against this team than that team. Analytics will tell you all that stuff. And what analytics does, it's like a true false test. It confuses you. Okay. I just like to coach from the gut and the heart. And if I'm wrong, so be it. You know, but uh, I, I, I'm not a big numbers guy. That's just me. So, so with that, your gut, does it tell you to start Jari against the Bruins? Or are you like, you know what, just ride Ned until he's good? Ride that. Ride that. So Get your surfboard out and ride them all the way to the West Coast, dude, to Malibu. I mean, that's good. That's you good. Know, there's going to be a time you're going to need Jerry, too. You know what I mean? So, I, I mean, I always say these guys are paid professionals, and their job is to get ready for their next time to get called up. So, Ned is, is, playing to earn a bigger paycheck. Jari needs to be training so that way when he gets called in, so God forbid we're having a, a hard time in Boston, Jari go in there. Jari needs to be a brick wall to yeah. earn his spot back. And that's what they're paid to do. So, um, yeah, I agree with you. I would say absolutely. Ride net. You, you remember on that West Coast trip when uh, they, they beat Vancouver the first game, all things were going good, and then they just got smoked like the next three games, just awful. That's when everyone was like, they're out of the playoffs now. Well, Jari started. Ned went in. Ned was not good either because he wasn't, whatever, for whatever reason, you know. 
But I mean, you would think Jars is pretty hungry right now. If they had to pull Ned for whatever reason, Jars sure. would be hungry to go in there and pick his teammates up. I mean, you know, he, he, like you said, they're paid professionals. You know, Jars gets a big paycheck every two weeks over 181 days. So, you know, there'll be a time when they call him and he's going to earn it for them and, and they're going to need him. You know, you need all guys in the room. You need the guys that are, you know, healthy scratches that are pushing guys in practice to be better and stuff. So, yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I, I kind of agree with our, our guest that we had on the other night, Hunter, like we need both of them going forward. I, I think if we're going to try to make any type of push, like it's not going to be one or the other. I think it's got to be both. So it's like he made a good point about Jari being cold going into the playoffs. Are you fearful of that at all? Because now we're going like two, three weeks. I mean, then maybe four if we just ride Ned all the way to the end of the season before Jari's been in like a legitimate game. I, I don't say cold, I say hungry. And this is no disrespect to Hunter, okay? I've, st I've stood behind benches at all levels of AAA and junior hockey as a coach. Mm -hmm. So I've been there. I understand it, okay? I understand. Yeah, of My, course. Your job as a coach is to give your team and put your players in the best position to be successful and win, okay? So, you know, if I'm if I'm Sully and I'd say, Jars, you got the net tonight, then he's got to go out there and perform at a high level. You know, 91, 92 save percentage. You know, we can't have this 85, 78 save percentage nights. Like when they were going through this losing stretch, that's not going to cut it, guys. Like if you're going to win Stanley Cups, your goalie's got to perform throughout the playoffs at a 91, minimum 91% percentage or higher if you're going to win the hardest trophy in sports. Yeah. So yeah. I don't I don't have any issues with, with Jars being cold. I would think from a gut feel as a coach, He's going to be very, very hungry, <laughs> you know, and goalies, goalies feel pucks. They feel good about themselves when they can feel a puck. You know, they know if they're fighting it on a night or they know if they're not tracking pucks or whatever. So it's a feel, you know, it's just like I'd say in sports, especially at the pro level, do you really develop guys and make them better? Yeah, you can work on some things, you know, with guys, especially younger players and stuff. But at this level, if you took the same athletes with the same skill level, with the same height, weight, strength, everything, the teams that perform at the highest level are the ones that perform at the highest mental capacity. Okay. Mm. And your job as a coach is to push the right button, give them days off, joke around, have it loose. You know, that's why they say, oh, this guy's great for the dress room. He keeps it loose in there and fun. Like I've seen comments like from uh, Dan and different guys that practice, the Penguins look like they're having fun again. And I always reserve, reserve back to that when I'm talking to my players, if we're going through a tough game or a tough period or a tough stretch guys, why did you play this game and get up at six in the morning when you were six years old? Because it was fun, coach. Okay, then just go out there and have fun. And the Penguins are having a lot of fun right now. Their fans are having a lot of fun. Like I commented earlier, it feels like the fans feel like they're, you know, a connection of the team. Absolutely. Yeah. They're out there busting their ass for you guys. That's what's so disheartening when some fans just come hard down on players. Like those players are out there busting their ass for the city of Pittsburgh. It's a blue collar, hard working, F you kind of town. Which where I grew up to in Cleveland is very similar. I know you hate when I mentioned Cleveland, Josh, but it is what it is. Um, <laughs> I, but it I is, hate it. Yeah, I hate it. Yeah, I know. But yeah. no, I, I agree with you. I, I 100%. I think that was something I mentioned when Bunting came in um, about his attitude and how, yes, we all wanted Jake Ensel, but Michael Bunting looks and acts like he wants to be here. You know, like you, you see, you see him all the time, just just getting excited and ha like laughing when they they get a goal or 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 I saw it tonight. Uh, Brian Rust shot on net, and it it went off like I think it was like a, a high blocker into the net, and like he's laughing with Rust. Like I didn't know you were going to shoot it. You know, yeah. like he's having yeah. fun out there. And I think that's infectious. And I don't think the Penguins have had that in the no, beginning it's a of this season. Of grit, you know, grit, like the fourth line, they don't get a ton of ice time. So if their impactfulness on the game is not where Michael Bunting is playing in the top six. His grit, different player than Jake Kendall, right? Jake Kendall is a very highly skilled speed scorer. But Jake's not going to get in there and mix it up a little. I mean, he'll get in there and draw penalties and take a beating to help his team out. But Michael Bunting is going to get in there and create a four check. Uh, create all kinds of havoc. And that that when you play with that gritty, relentless attitude, it gets infectious. Like, I know there's been comments made where he's, like, brought uh, Malkin and uh, who's on his line, Raquel, into the fight, right? 
because yeah. I mean, since Michael Bunning's been playing with with uh, with Gino, completely different player. He's like bringing him into the fight by his tenacity and his hard work ethic and his grittiness. And I mean, you bring other people to the fight, and then those guys bring another group of guys into the fight. And before you know it, you got twenty guys on the bench rolling their oars in the same direction, paddling the same boat where you want to get to, and it's infectious. You know what I mean? It's infectious. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think that's. I think they're having fun. I think that's just what it is right now. Josh. Yeah. yeah I. The the one thing that I'm still questioning, you know, like right now we're in we're in the playoffs, but we're still essentially fighting because everyone is still on our heels. It's only a one point difference. Like it, you know, a two game losing streak can kick us right out of the playoffs and have no hopes. So do you just ride the lines that you have right now? Cause I know we have guys who are hurt, who are trying to come back. We have you know, uh, Pooley RV who was a healthy scratch. Um, you know, we have all these guys who keep getting called up, being sent down. Like Sam Pullian was just brought down and for him Zahorna was brought up. Like, do you keep doing this or do you just ride who you have? Cause I feel like, why mess with what's, you know, if it ain't Working. broke, don't fix it, essentially. Well, you're talking about you're, the guys you're talking about in and out of the lineup are like fourth line guys. Um, just depends on what you're looking for. Are you looking for speed, forward checking? Are you looking for size? Are you looking, what are you looking for? I mean, they're gonna, those guys are going to play six to eight minutes a night right now. Um, so every shift to them is, is very, very big and how they can impact the game with momentum on the forward check. I, I just like to play hard, get pucks behind their D and forward check the heck out of teams because then it wreaks havoc, creates turnovers, and sets up momentum for the next shift when the top six guys come out after a, a big ozone time by the third or fourth line. That's infectious, and you get a great scoring chance, a great area to score a goal after that, right? So it's just like tonight, like you said, um, Josh, you said about finishing period. Like you, it's, you can't get you're fighting for your playoff lines. You can't give up a goal 38 seconds left in the second period. As coaches, we remind our guys first shift, shift after PK, shift after a goal. There's certain important monumental shifts in a game and last minute of a period is definitely one of them. So you got to bear down. You got to be, be attention to detail. You got to be hard on everything. Everything's a hard out. Like you got to make, you just can't let those kind of things because it gives the other team momentum. We talk about metal swings, right? They're going into this. Now they're going in after two feeling good about themselves or they would have felt not so good about themselves. If you go in with a two goal lead and then Jeff Carter would have scored a third goal Right out of the hop. Now you're up six. You know you're up uh, five, five two. You know what I mean? Like that's a big difference. Yeah. So yeah, agreed. So I don't know. You change. I mean, it's just a gut. Once again, to me, it's a gut feel. I mean, your 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 top guys are going so well right now. Uh, Ned's going well. It just depends on what you're looking for on those other guys. Sometimes coaches like to rotate in, so there's new faces. So guys are looking around, like, okay, who's it? What's going on? Because for players perform in sports. Or on sales teams in business, when they're much better when they're on their tippy toes and hungry, than when they sit back in their chair on their heels. They just do. Mm -hmm. And if it's infectious, youthful, new guy in the lineup thing, you know, I mean, you know, Sully relied on that fourth line for a long time with Carts, uh, Nachari, and Jansen, and they, you know, Nachari got hurt. Jansen's been hurt a while. That fourth line hasn't been together, and he relied on them for a lot for D zone faceoffs, whatever. Now that responsibility is falling on. Those other guys, because maybe he doesn't trust that fourth line as much. He's getting carts some of the ice, you know, like he's up to like eight to ten minutes. Um, but those other guys don't kill penalties. They don't play on the power play. So they're getting, you know, six minutes. But they got to be impactful six minutes. You know, you got to yeah. – every player always says, I just want to do what I can do to help the team win. Okay, well, you might get six minutes, help the team win, do your job, and do what you can do to help the team win. That's all the players want to yeah. do, help the team win. Yeah, because those six minutes, right, can alleviate – you know, Sid and Malkin so that they have a, so they're fresh when they come on. Right. So it's right, not just David Braun, riding yeah, them the David, whole guy. Yeah. That David Prawn couldn't get to sit on that back door. Maybe, I don't know what the Lomas do if he's running the top nine. And, you know, if your fourth line can give you an extra two shifts than they're getting right now, that gives Sid and those guys an extra rest. So when they're in a scoring chance situation, whatever, they can get to that loose puck or stretch out because they have the energy to do it. So, you know, it's a weird thing, but inches are everywhere. Like Dan Gilbert taught me this when back when he invested the guy from Quick and Loans, one of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Inches mm. are everywhere. It's our job to reach out and grab them. Oh, nice. I like All that. Right.
That's a good one. Nice little subtle drop that you know Dan Gilbert, owner of the yeah. Cavaliers. <laughs> yeah, he gave me a hundred grand invested in, in uh, TV in my own company. So. Nice. I was very fortunate. I, I had Dan Gilbert as an investor, and I sold my company to Jerry Jones, Blue Star Sports, to go to the Cowboys. So I had two two sports team owners. Just dropping, them. just and just way, dropping these information. Awesome. Oh my gosh! Uh, so all cool. right, we got one more question. It's not hockey related. We know you're a golf guy. Who's your master's pick? Yeah, I already said Kepka. Oh, you already answered this. Yeah, I already answered. Yeah, while you were loading the video. Oh. DJ DJ's wife's too hot, you know. Paulina Gretzky, she's just too hot walking around the course. So you got to go with Kepka. Okay. I, so wait, so I a hot, a, so a golfer with a hot wife is not good. Distracted, distracted. Oh. And Josh, what what did Rocky teach us? Yeah. Is, pa- is Paige Brannick is Paige Brannick a good golfer, Josh? Do you know who she is? Yeah, yeah, I do know who she is. Yeah. Okay. Do you, do you even know if she plays golf, lacrosse, or tennis, or pickleball? Do you know what sport no, she I, plays? No, I, I do know that she plays golf, yes. And how do you know that? Because, well, she's always on my uh, my Twitter's, Twitter feed. <laughs> but other than that, there's obvious for golfing. other reasons. For golfing. Yeah. <laughs> for golfing. Josh is a big golf fan, apparently. <laughs> Uh, well, you know I watch golf. Get well, out I love I love. No, Bubba no, Watson. I know you. Got you a root for Bubba Watson. Remember when he won the Masters? Where did they sing? Bubba, where'd you go after the Masters? He went to Waffle House. That's hilarious. I think that's yeah. great. Yeah. I don't know anything about golf. Do you I go to I- IHOP? If I won the Masters, I go right to IHOP. Oh, you're an IHOP guy. Go right to IHOP. IHOP guy. Short stacks. Next, I'm in. I'm in. Next, you're gonna tell me the only reason why I say IHOP is because I own IHOP, and then everyone just no, 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 no. you just drop best those information. No, the best Wait, I have is another that. master's question though. Yeah, Tiger, legit or no? Do you, what do you think? I don't know. I, I talked to a lot of people, and he's pretty banged up from all the you know, that yeah. leg, like he's playing on one leg. So I mean, you know, the TV people wish for it. The mass, everyone wishes for it. Believe me, if it's Sunday and Tiger's wearing red and he's in the hunt, oh my God, the TV ratings will be off the charts, and so will the galleries that follow him. True. Yeah. So. Yeah. Who do you guys like? The who, do you guys like who do you guys like in the Masters? I honestly, I don't. I don't even know. Like that's the thing. Like going into it, like I kind of feel like it's anyone that could win it. Like I, I, I don't. There's not one person that I feel like can actually just run away with it in years past. There's that guy. Um, he can't. He went over to live. He was like the number one golfer in the world for a few years. Um, Rory. No, not Rory. I think it was like Sergio. Not Sergio. Sergio, Sergio, Sergio Garcia. Garcia. Yeah. So like I, I don't know I kind of feel like maybe he's got a shot, but yeah. John um, Rom, John Rom, John Rom, Scheffler, Scheffler's playing out of his mind this year. Like I mean, it's, yeah, it's going to be nice because so, it's been like the same, almost the same guys at the top of the leaderboards for the last few weeks. So it'll be nice that uh, there's going to be some stiff competition this weekend. Yeah, it's really, exactly. Of That's the thing. I saw some pictures. It looks it looks gorgeous up there right now. every year. Every year it looks gorgeous. Every year it makes me want to just move down to Augusta. This is the one this tournament one. that like I'll watch like I'll almost watch. every minute of it just because I like to. Yeah, that's what that's what I strive for. If I can have my grass looking like that grass when I'm cutting it in the landscape of my house, like I'm a happy guy. Simple. I'm a simple guy. Electric okay. lawnmower guy though. By the way, I'm electric lawnmower. No gas. I don't yeah. Electric no really. Gas. Go with the East Coast. I, yeah. I honestly I would have guessed gas if you had same because because you're like hey blue collar. I'm going to get my gas. I'm going to have the loudest lawnmower in the world. <laughs> no. I see that's what I that's what I see from you, but How long did you it like last? The electric? For, I did have a 289 you... a 289 uh, a 65 Mustang convertible back in the day when I was in high school. I wish I still had that car. That had some oh. getting up and go. But like GT old cars like that. Yeah, those are cars though. Like I ain't buying no Tesla. But I got power tools in electric, okay? Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. power bills go uh, Electric bills going up, but hey, who do you think's gonna win? <laughs> Roland Garros, huh? Huh? Roland Garros. Coco Golf coming up two weeks, right? Two weeks. Hey, all right, all right. <laughs> That's coming up soon, yeah. But I, I'm not like I said. I'm a tennis guy. That's I don't, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. How do I know? Uh, clay courts. That red clay gets all of the bottom of your shoes. If you come to my house, you gotta take your shoes off at the door and come in. You uh, can't drag that clay. In hey. <laughs> I will say, I lived in Florida for a couple of years. 
clay courts are the best. I love playing on clay courts. So yeah, well, um, you can slide them. You're, not gonna, you're not going to blow out your ankle like twisting or whatever. So were you at the Nick Ball Terry Tennis Academy there, at IMG Academy, or where were you at? No, no, no. I was in Jupiter. Uh, oh. it, there's nice, nice clay courts in Jupiter, uh, Florida. They were out. They were public. Just oh, nice. Yeah gray gray uh clay and uh every single night they would come out and rake them and water them and man well, they guess, took really guess care I'm into, guess who i'm gonna run into this weekend here are the u.s pickleball nationals in naples florida none other than joe quenville because q plays pickleball down here all the time his son room with my dear friend marty mccafferty's son connor at college at miami ohio and Q has a place Who down here. He, know? He, plays, he plays pickleball all the time. So I'm going to chat it up with Coach Who Q. Who don't you know? <laughs> Lots of people. Lots of people. But he also knows a lot of yeah. people. It goes both ways. He knows everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, do you know Coco Goff? No, but I know Novak Djokovic. <laughs> that's, that's what... I you love know that Sydney time. Crossman? I love that time Djokovic had a rain delay and he went and sat by that ball guy, called him over the chair. Opened up yeah. uh, San yeah. Pellegrino for him. I and mean, that's cool as hell. Like, that's awesome. That was yeah. the only nice thing he's ever done. <laughs> really um, nice. It's true. I'm not a big fan of Novak, but he's okay. a really good tennis player. Um, I, was, I was the McEnroe Bjorn Borg era. Okay. When Bjorn Borg used to like always put his hair behind his ears and those matches would be right. great. I love when Mac would get all over the umpires. So the knowledge is the replay, the, you know, it's, you can't argue a call. It's not subjective anymore. It's all digitally done, and you're right or you're wrong based on what the no, camera says. I hate that. Well, too. no, it, it depends what tournament you're in. Uh, yeah. Now the guy who freaks out the most is Medvedev. Mm -hmm. uh, so he freaks out, like, every day. So. Yeah, but like anyway. Macro at the end of his career, should have been a trial lawyer because he loves to argue. Yeah, he does. Now, the way he argued wasn't great. No, I well, I watched so many there. clips. Yeah, 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 but it was good. It was very entertaining. Speaking of entertaining, the Penguins have a very entertaining. <laughs> see that? Nice. See what I did there, Josh? Yeah. All good all segment. Episode. Good segment. But this yes. this is this is flawless. this is why we get paid the hundred and thirty dollars if we get this <laughs> bet to hit. Oh, um, <laughs> Penguins have a very entertaining week. Ahead of them, uh, there, it's going to be a Saturday game against Bruins. I had the schedule pulled up. I apologize. Saturday, Bruins, eight p.m. Then Monday, Predators, seven p.m. Islanders, seven o'clock on Wednesday. I would love to win out. Most likely, that's not going to happen. Coach, what do you think for the next? Three games. What do you think? Two out of three? Three out of three? I think uh, – who does Boston play? When do they play before they come in on Saturday night? Where do they play? Oh, I'm not sure. Who does Boston play? Yeah, could you look it up? Jeff? Yeah, I'll, fi I'll find that real quick. Then I'll make my prediction. Okay. Just remember, I got poor Wi-Fi here. Yeah, that's all right. Don't worry. Josh, I got it. Pretty soon that that little voice is going to come out. That's their next. I think that's, that's their, their next, next game. game. That's their next. Who they game. play? No one until us. Oh, that's that's good. Hopefully they're flat. Because they, what do they got to play for? They got to play for nothing. You nope. know what I'm saying they're already in. They can't really move anywhere. I don't think. Or they someone stole their heels. I thought they. No, no. Hmm. They're, they're no. They got clinched. They got the, They got the first. I think they got first in the. Uh, well, they're in the Atlantic, right? Yeah, yeah, but they may be fighting for fighting presidents, for but, but I don't think I don't think they're going to be. Fighting. This is the time of year, guys, when your best players have to play better than the other team's best players. Tonight, mm -hmm. did those guys? Ned were, were, were good. Keener was okay. Larkin, okay. He had a nice goal. Made a nice play on Raymond's other one, but you know, to bring it. You know, I don't know. So your best players got to be your best players. If Sid and Gino and Carlson or Latang, one of the two, and Ned are our best players on Saturday night, we'll win the game. So let's hope. Let's hope. 
that they are. <laughs> I hope we go three for three. Three for three. Three for three. I think we I can, think as, we well. can as well. Ned starts, Ned all, starts of them, all of them. And the Penguins clinch a playoff spot. Yeah. I just hope that we win the next two and the Islanders game ain't gonna matter. That's what I hope for. Mm. Just getting a little help from other places. That's true. That's true. I, so, I you know what? we've been in the seventh game of a series for the last ten games. And we're playing yeah. like it. And you want to ride that wave into the playoffs. These other teams that have clinched and they got nowhere to go and they complacency sets them in the Rangers game. I was watching a little bit of that tonight. I mean, they got the Flyers kind of took it to them. They were kind of just standing around in quicksand, not really yep. you know, disinterested. disinterested. So let's first round. Penguins and six. All right. Donnie, thank you so much for joining this episode. <laughs> Uh, we'll see you in next week. I think we'll see you on the Predators game on Monday. Cool. All right. Awesome. Donnie, awesome. thank you so goals, much for a lot of goals to choose from to break down. Lot of, that's right. That's right. I like it. Maybe a Jansen Harkins goal if he gets called up. Let's hope. Let's hope. You never know. You never know. You never know. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Donnie. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Peace. Guys, what an episode. What an episode. I love when Donnie comes on. Me He's too. the best. I need to ask him what his watch was. I was eyeing it up the entire time. So I need to ask him what the watch was. <laughs> Surprised you didn't He's, already know. I think he's mouthing Rolex. Yeah, is that what it is? Dude just wants to <laughs> flaunt now. Dude just wants the flock. All right. Hamilton, dude. All right. All right. Guys, thank you so much for joining us this episode. Whether you're live on Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, or you're listening later on on all your favorite podcast platforms, we appreciate it. Me and Josh... We're going on vacation, Josh, aren't we? Yeah, we are. I just I yeah. realized as you were doing the schedule, we're gonna we're we're gonna be together for those last two games. Like do three we just... games. Oh no, no, not Saturday. No, not I'll Saturday. be in Kentucky. I'll be in on, Virginia. Yeah, on Saturday. I'll eight o'clock. I'll have to find a spot to do that. Yeah. I'm sure you can. You may just have to run to my car. No, I'm just do it in the bathroom or something. <laughs> no, that's usually where we put Josiah. Yeah, I know. Say what you want. Wait until you have kids. You got to put the baby in the pack and play in the bathroom so you have some privacy. Let them have their own room, essentially. <laughs> so you'll be fine. You'll be fine. No, because then the other boys will be sleeping. That's what I'm saying. I'll go. Josh, you know what? I think it's just I'll go in the car or something. Don't bring the kids on the trip. How about that? Just leave them out. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's just leave, leave them home. Leave them 20 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be fine. Anyway, uh, we'll be streaming the last three games from a different location. Uh, so the sound quality might yeah. suffer a little bit. Um, but we're still going to have the same amount of fun. Uh, for Saturday, we're going to be streaming from two different locations. Tuesday, I'm sorry, Monday, Monday and and Wednesday, Josh and I will be in the same spot. So one screen. Wow. Hopefully, if we can Crazy. get it to work. Yeah, we'll be fine. All, All right, guys. We'll see you in the next episode. That's Boston, Saturday, 8 p.m. start. So it's going to be a little bit later of a game. Uh, stay tuned. We live tweet during the game on Twitter, at Penns Collective. Make sure you follow along. We tweet. We get into arguments sometimes. It's a great time. Also, we have a Discord. If you want to stay up to date with what the fans think, or you just want to join a fun group of people, our Discord has been growing. I'm pretty sure we're up to 30 people on that Discord now. It's awesome. It. It's Discord slash the Penguins Collective. Make sure you join it. It's fun. Uh, and we got a lot of shout stuff. Out. Shout out to Ethan. Who was at tonight's Ethan. game? He was the lucky, lucky guy. Your presence willed us there. But I will say, 
if you keep ruining those goals when you are live, I will come find you. I had yeah. to, I had to silence my notifications because I see your text, your yeah. the Discord chat, and then I'd see the penguins notifications, and I'm like, nothing's happening on my screen, so I had to start silencing the notifications. Yeah, but I, I will told come find you if you keep doing that. I told him on Discord, I was like, I get stressed whenever he makes a comment. And he was like, why? I was like, because you're a future teller to us. Because yeah. they're like a minute ahead <laughs> in real time. So yeah. he'll he'll comment. He goes, Rusty. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and I have to watch the play. Not that I'm not happy we scored, but I have to watch it unfold. And I'm like. Oh, there it is. <laughs> to be fair, though, when I was getting those, I was watching way more attentively than I was when I silenced them. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was like as soon as I, I saw the rusty one, and I'm like, okay, all right, where's it going to happen? Where? He's not on the ice right now. So what? Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> and then you say, okay, there he is. Oh, yeah, he's there he setting is. Up. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, we're in the defensive zone. It's not going to happen now. <laughs> oh, here's the breakout. Yep. 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 There it is. Yep. Time to tweet. <laughs> so so good. All right. We will see you guys. Make sure. Well, first of all, make sure you join the Discord for Ethan to ruin uh, all the anxiety of hockey games. But make sure you join Discord. Make sure you follow along on Twitter. We live tweet every single game. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you in the next one. And as always, Joshua. Let's go Pens.